السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام Uh, this is from uh, one of your videos. All right. Uh, by focusing on Jesus and not the Christian religion, I came to the realization that Jesus is Sufi. I was brought up in Christianity, but left it years ago. But I always loved Jesus. Now I am interested in Sufism sincerely. I want to know more. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> That uh, anytime somebody is sincere and seeking, and when they have a sincere seeking within their heart, then inshaAllah Allah guides them to a completion. So anybody wants they can look on Amazon and the levels of the heart. The heart is the house of God. So if, if what we say is true, The house of God should be mentioning all His Prophets and look to the book and that's the teaching from these awliya that your heart if you want it to be the house of God has to love all the Prophets because each Prophet has a secret for us. This is not new age and this is not new age da'wah, this is actual reality of the heart that the Prophet Adam has to come to you and teach you that we are a, a being for knowledge because he achieved knowledges from the Divinely Presence. The Prophet Noah has to come to us to achieve faith. Yeah, everyone has a ship to build on this earth. So nobody escapes it, nobody has an easy way, everybody has to build a ship. Either you're building it through hardship, hardship. Because it's a hardship so that you could traverse this earth and the floods of ignorance that will come. So that's Sayyidina Nuh, Sayyidina Noah's gift for us. He must come and must come to your heart and begin to teach you. And then Sayyidina Abraham comes and that's the whole understandings of Hajj and the father of faith and all of the, the, the examples of faith. And what we call tabarak, that all these symbolisms and the blessings of these symbolisms and rituals, that when you do them with knowledge, they have an immense reality for you. And that the Prophet uh, Musa, Moses, to come and to teach that don't. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To hold on to dunya and run to the promised land and all of the realities that Sayyidina Musa represents, which are immense again in the fighting of your dunya desire and moving towards the good character and the Divinely Kingdom. And then Sayyidina Isa who has an immensely blessed origin as a result is an ethereal nature in which how to leave the earth and ascend into the heavens. And the ascension of Sayyidina Isa was essential. That the earth and the inhabitants of earth have no way to kill him. Had they killed him then the ascension of men would have not been possible because then God would have given priority to devils to kill saintly people, pious people. But He plays a significant role salam, peace and blessings be upon His immense soul in the ascension. That no matter what the earth wants and the inhabitants of the earth that the one whom 
God is pleased with must be able to ascend. And the ascension into the heavens and the ability of people to ascend into the heavens is an essential role that Sayyidina Isa has to come to teach us. That how to, once you've left all these, how to contemplate and how to meditate, how to enter into God's kingdom. And that's why his prayer and there's the equivalent in Islamic prayers, the kingdom come. Whose kingdom? Allah's kingdom is coming. And his will should always be done on earth and that's an immense reality that if we want God's kingdom we have to bring his kingdom into our heart here on earth. So if you look around say who, who's slightly giving the example of God's kingdom? Then look at the people whom are pious. Whom they abstain from bad things, they, they abstain from drinking, from smoking, from, from uh, improper character, improper activities. They're trying to enact God's kingdom. So then those must be examples of God's kingdom on earth. As a result Sayyidina Isa teaching us, bring God's kingdom into your heart. If you bring it you'll be given ascension into the heavens and that they're ethereal nature and the power of their soul to open for them to see God's kingdom. And they park the physical body and through the reality of the soul God opens their heart, opens their hearing, opens their seeing through the power of their soul and enters into that kingdom, into the presence of the king. And that king is Sayyidina Muhammad who then annihilates all bad character. And that to come into the presence of the kingdom as nothing, means once you lift off it's not over, that's just the beginning into the kingdom. Once you enter into the kingdom the presence of Prophet has to come to teach the servant, you're nothing. They don't care you're Prophet, you're a saint, you're a pauper, you're a rich person, you have to be nothing entering in the kingdom. So that's why all the Prophets when they came to the presence of Prophet they had to lose their title. Sayyidina Musa, Moses peace and blessings be upon him, he had to lose his title and he was sent into the presence of Sayyidina Khidr who continuously testing and humiliating. Why? That your title and your prophecy is not needed here because you're now entering into the presence of a king. And you take your turban and check it at the door and now you come to us as nothing. And he went through that whole trial and tribulation with Sayyidina Khidr to prove his worthiness to Sayyidina Muhammad So these are immense realities of the levels of the heart and that to enter the stations of annihilation everyone must enter into that presence of Prophet to be Mahya dhunub because that's shafat al-qubra. So the Sharia people want to say, where is that in Sharia? I say shafat al-qubra, qubra, the grand intercession that is a sahih hadith in which on the last day, on the judgment day all nations people will run to their prophets and ask, oh Adam please help us and he says, I cannot help you for I have sinned, I came onto this earth, I made a, a, a sin. Let us go to Noah, let us go to Ibrahim, let us go to Musa, let us go to Sayyidina Isa until all the Prophets take all their nations into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad If that's going to happen physically, you don't think it's already happening spiritually? Because Allah doesn't have time. That means of course the, when you hear of a physical event happening it must be continuously happening in the world of light. Means each Prophet must be coming to Prophet and admitting their nothingness. And that Prophet must pray for them and that that prayer is what gains them access into their paradise realities. And that's why Allah states in Qur'an that if you to the Prophets if you came in the time of Sayyidina Muhammad you have to accept his prophecy and waqalu bala and all the nations said, yes we would. And that's why then Prophet was sent to them on Isra'i wal-Maraj. 
He was sent into Jerusalem to the presence of 124,000 Prophets of God and they prayed behind Sayyidina Muhammad They gave their tashahhud and they bear witness that there is nothing but Allah and that Muhammadun is Rasulullah and as a result entered into the nation of Muhammadun Rasulullah If all the Prophets entered, all their nations entered means that the only religion on earth and in the heavens and throughout this universe is Islam. So alhamdulillah glad tidings for all those who understood those realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah <coughs> uh, Sayyidi from yesterday's lecture, what is the Ra in Nar? These are the Rububiyya Arbab, means that the, they're lights right? So the Nur has a wow for the Rabb. Everything has to do with the Ulul Amr, means that these are the people of, of the Rabb, Rabbaniyoon, these are of the lordly souls. Either they're receiving just a wow, so with love is reflecting upon them so they become Nurani. But if they enter into the presence of the Izzat and Might which is Alif, is a Divine fire within the reality of Prophet then what happens? That that noon and that light when it hits that Alif is a fire coming out of that Rabb. And as a result it's not like the other stations, these are… this is a very powerful light coming from Prophet InshaAllah. And that alif is what we're in need of to reach towards the izzat and might. That's the izzat al rasul So the alif at the end is izzatullah. The alif in the nar is izzat al rasul and the alif after the seen is izzat al-mu'mineen like we described, you have to go to the people of, of might whom Allah addressed, izzat al-rasul, izzat Allah, izzat al-rasul, izzat al-mu'mineen. You have to go to them, so Allah has them in this kalima, in the word insan. And only through that izzat, that might can change that reality and bring them deeper into that reality inshaAllah. Said nobody can decide that they're going to reach towards Allah if they're just the noon. So they have to traverse the system of guidance. No, nobody can come and say, I'm going to be a moon, right? And say, I'm going to make a ship like a moon, I'm going to put it where the moon is, and I'm now going to follow the orbit of the sun. As a matter of fact, if you try to do that, the orbit and the gravity would either throw you in or throw you out. So how it stays on a perfect orbit moving in the way that Allah has destined to it then is Allah's miracles. Had you tried to imitate it with a ship and say, I'm going to now fly in that orbit, either the orbit of the earth will suck you in and crash you or the orbit of the planet will spit you out into space. You don't have the choice to follow and traverse that orbit. So these are, you know, these are guidance from Allah it's not the ability for people to lift themselves and take themselves into that reality. Allah wants them to follow these paths of guidance inshaAllah. But Allah is free to do whatever He wants if He makes an exception, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Thank you for this enlightened teaching. What happens to the students who are progressing slowly? Would the Ulul Amr help speed up the process for the students to reach their secrets? <clears throat> yeah, everybody progresses at the speed that God has given to them based on their circumstances, their life, their work, everything. As long as the servant is sincere 
Then Allah dress them, bless them, teach them through their meditation, teach them through their sleep, teach them through everything. So it's based on how sincere the servant is and how much zeal they have in wishing to accomplish these realities. So uh, the, the heavenly kingdom is something that is immense and, and can't be understood nor can it be limited. And those whom try to limit is, is not correct in their belief system. That there are people whom Allah can take them at night and traverse them through all these knowledges and all these realities. And then their physicality they don't have time to achieve that, Allah will take them through their spirituality. So it means these are you know Allah's, Allah's not limited by anything. So when we say, Allahu Akbar Allah can do anything. But it requires for us just to be sincere, they are if I'm sincere I'm trying but you see I'm busy with this, I'm busy with all these things open a way for me to achieve. Just on their sincerity Allah can send anything, anything. The, the mind can't even contemplate all the examples on how Allah can raise that servant in an instant. But it's based on, I'll be sincere, I'm going to struggle the best that I can. And when Allah wants to grant me a victory, Allah will grant it at whatever time that He feels necessary. Things are unfolding very quickly on the earth. So those events on the earth by its own nature will cleanse many people. They won't be able to imagine what this earth, what they'll be seeing. Those have their own cleansing. So by means of those difficulties many will be brought into a state of cleansing, state of annihilation and then the state of uh, <clears throat> state of realities, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, can you please explain again how Mulana Shah Naqshaband Qadda Sayyidu zikr of who over the sir of insan connects to the nar of Muhammad Rasulullah I don't think that's what we said. That's why you have to take notes that this reality of insan was taught by Mawlana Shah Naqshband. So he's the teacher of ilm huruf. As a result of teaching that reality that he also holds one of the other realities, the secret of the zikr of who upon the pearls of creation. The pearl of everyone whom has these realities has a pearl in which Surat al-Rahman is… Well, what is the Surat al-Rahman describe of the oceans? Surat al-Rahman is the ocean of Rahman, mercy. Lulu, Lulu wa al-Maljoon. The pearls and corals, the Shaykhnazim would always talk, why pearls and corals? Because these are the treasures of Allah's oceans of Rahman. So when they're reciting Surat al-Rahman, all awliya they exist within that surah and described, some described as rubies, some as pearls, some as corals. So the treasures of Allah are not the seashells because that's what the ocean throughout. You know as kids you go and collect seashells. So when you collect those then they say, well that's for you, what we want is inside that ocean. What Allah didn't kick out is in the ocean. So when they dive in that ocean then those are the pearls of Allah's oceans of rahmah and mercy. We said we're all under Sifatul Rahman al Ashistawa that Allah described the commanding Sifat is Rahman and it sits on the throne, means that we're all coming from Sifat al-Rahman because we come through Rahim which is womb and Noon is the light that's Rahman. So when we come through the womb and all of us are coming through a womb on this creation, Allah gives us a Noon which is a light. So it means that the one whom is in the ocean of Rahmah and Allah gave to Mawlana Shah Naqshband a secret in which his nazar upon this pearl, this is the secret of the scene. 
There are pearls in which Allah describes they are the pearls of this ocean, this lulu. Mawlana Shah Naqshban's reality, one of them because may have infinite number of realities of their souls is that he makes the zikr of who upon that. Means from Allah's essence and the power and qudra that given to that soul is continuously watching and dressing. So when his nazar is upon that soul means he's instilling upon from the secret of his heart upon those pearls and that his soul was created as the awliya 7,000 years before the soul of any wali. So you cannot say any wali is higher than that, he's created before they were created. Naqshbandiyatul aliyya is the soul of all other tariqahs. They take their tariqah from the realities and haqqaiqs of Naqshbandiyatul aliyya because it comes from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. So the immensity of what was poured into the heart of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is like no other sahabi and each separate. So if you look to the hand the Siddiqiyah finger is the highest and Prophet describes Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq has the highest station because of what Allah has poured into his reality. So this is something that is a, is a gift to the nation. Say, Siddiq Naqshbandiyatul Aliya is that Imam Ali Salam comes to give his family inheritance into Naqshbandiyya and to bless it and dress it. So it becomes the tariqah of, of two secrets of the great Siddiq and Imam Ali Salam. So it has an immense reality, immense states of perfection. And from all tariqahs will find their reality within that. And that's why this is the tariqah that's kept alive and running still to the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam and flowing from the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam. And most other tariqahs their knowledges have all stopped because the taps have all been closed. So this has an immense reality and now is powered by Sayyidina Mahdi Salam and Imam Ali Salam. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah What are the reality of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam? Is he from Naqshbandiya Aliya order? Yeah, I think Naqshbandiya Aliya order is from him. He's Muhammadiya, so he's much higher than, than these names because he comes as the Muhammadan representative on earth. So as a result he's under the tarbiyah of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah means that these awliya and the lineage all the way to the heart of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is the fuel and the dress of knowledges been given and the tarbiyah and the, the realities that been poured into the heart of Imam Mahdi Salam. But when Imam Mahdi Salam makes the appearance that Muhammadiyah is then established, the Muhammadan kingdom is established. No other name will present itself in his presence because in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad then there is no other name. Means that the true La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah is then returned and the trust is returned and uh, <coughs> Alam al-Islam is then reconfirmed because right now there is no Imam, there's no Khalifa on this earth. So when Imam Mahdi comes salam, becomes the Khalifa of Islam and uh, under the flag and the banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah inshaAllah and all are called to follow him salam inshaAllah. Sayyidi, many people commenting on TikTok and YouTube isn't Satan an angel? And someone else says, can a jinn pose as an angel or pretend to No, be? he's not an angel. I don't know why, who came up with these things? He's clearly described by Prophet as a jinn and he was in the majlis of jinn and uh, he was known for the nations of jinn upon this earth. And because of the jinn race, and their fiery nature because it's an example that carries and moves forward. And because of his ibadat and worshipness he was raised to
to the presence of angels. And in his associations he would speak and the angels could hear and learn from his teachings. But at no time he was a, an angel, he was a jinn and his name Azazil. So that's a, a big difference because the angels they don't do bad. So this is a jinn and a very fiery natured jinn that was continuously testing. When Allah created the form of Adam before naming anything that he was flying into it and moving and thinking, oh this is clay and this is such a, an easy creation to, to come against and to attack and so these are different realities that he understood what, what uh, that creation was and, and uh, kept testing that creation. When Allah in the majlis of angels and jinn means all of creation was there, Allah presented Sayyidina Adam salam. So somebody else commented, no it's just angels. So what are you talking about it's just angels? Allah declared Sayyidina Adam salam into an open majlis and at that time the majlis had many jinn nations in that because they were already created. Now when he told them to bow down, everything bowed down save Azazil he did not bow down. The angels looked up and he still was there not bowing down, they went back into sujood, that's why we have two sujood. At that time when he didn't bow he said, you and your, your jinn followers all of them you are cast out from this heavens. And then they began to renegade and they gave, give us respite, give us an ability now to come against this creation and they were cast out of the heavens. And they were cast out in large numbers of those whom listened to him, were learned from him and were tainted by him. So this is, a, is, a, is important understanding that they were the jinn races and the angels were tainted by his teaching. And because of that tainting Allah wanted to expose that that which you listen to of knowledges is one thing but more important than the knowledge is the glass in which it comes to you. That his knowledge is based on arrogance. Look as soon as I asked him to, to bow down, he doesn't bow down. So whatever he taught you was based on arrogance. And that's why the danger of listening to people, we say, oh but it sounds good and this one sounds this and, but that sound can be a poisonous cup for you because anything can sound good but if you don't understand the the character of the person, whatever they're dispensing to you, it looks like clean water in a poison cup because you're going to take the characteristics of the one giving it to you. If the characteristic of that shaykh is clean and good then what comes to you of knowledge and good character. But if the, the heart is not clean and they're all reciting Qur'an which is immensely purified. But why some Qur'an has a different energy? Well because the heart of one who's reciting it and that becomes your poison cup. So the water is always beautiful but the cup you receive it in, is it going to kill you by taking a sip of it? And that's what Allah was showing the angels that you were impressed by His knowledge but look at His character. Now as a result you're tainted. Because those same angels open their mouth and ask, how are you making him the Khalifa? Because those were the tainted angels because who would, what angel would open their mouth? The ones went into sujood but the ones whom were his students they are, why are you making him the khalifa? That they're going to make so much bloodshed. So those were apart then all cast down of the heavens and they came down to earth and those are the stories now of earth. They came down onto earth, they made fitna. They made all sorts of difficulties and all sorts of wildness and, and uh, destruction with their knowledges of the heavens they came down to earth and made fitna. And the angels then partake in a war against the earth in which they came then to fight these creations. So there many things have happened but definitely they were of the jinn races. And the jinn races now govern these earth and that's why the teaching is very important to understand. The dajjal that's coming is a jinn nature, he will show himself as human because humans don't understand veiling. So they appear to be humans but they're not human. 
they're, they're of a jinn race. And 99% of people now they appear to be human but they're not human. And this Mawlana Shaykh would say that at his time he would say, 90% of people are no longer human. They gave their humanity away. They subjected themselves to something other than humanity. As a result when you give yourself to these shayateen they occupy immediately the person. They change their eyes, they change the desire, they change the temperament because the devil is within them. What they eat, what they want, what they want of suffering, what they want of blood then changes the demeanor of the person. That's why we said that watch when Allah sent the Lord of the Rings. These are marketing from heavens that how that one human became such a dirty and despicable person, that qalam, and started to lose the image of his humanity. Now now look at people like that, they don't look like humans anymore, they mark themselves they look like lizards. They look literally green from a distance and even they're changing their face to look like the reptilians and lizards and all these races of Allah's creation that are not good and they're not uh, beneficial and their desires to eat humans. They have no intention of teaching them and, and coming with kumbaya and, and giving them guidance and taking them to higher states of, of uh, enlightenment. They're coming to serve mankind on a dish, you're the meal. <laughs> there was an Outer Limits show like that when we grew up that they had come and we're going to be good to you. They had a UFO parked and it was a door and it looked like a restaurant menu to serve mankind and people were en entering in like they're coming into a restaurant. But like the Bugs Bunny cartoon that they're making a big soup and, and they were cutting the carrots. Yeah, so <laughs> they have something else planned for, for humanity. So, but Allah is great, so whatever they plan Allah already has a plan for all of that. That's why come to your enlightenment, come to your connection, come to everything. That's why the Holy Companions inspiring that we're with you. If you love Sayyidina Muhammad then we're with you. The sunnah that you carry, you're carrying our love and our love is with you because that's the hadith, you be with whom you love. When you love Prophet he's with you. If Prophet is with you, don't you think his holy companions are with you? Because he doesn't travel alone, so they're with you. They're with you in everything that you have and you take and you hold. That's what has to be understood. That when you have the sunnah then you have a holy companion who's with you and what it represents to hold you, to stabilize you, to support you. You're not something left alone. Allah doesn't leave those whom love to be alone and to be eaten by wolves. Allah will send lions to destroy the wolves, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How do we realize what jinns and bad idols are there inside of us? How to become more aware of the bad inside us? <clears throat> the, the meditation because that's the, the video that the guys released, right? If I want to know what, what's a compound, like uh, the person says, this is like a beautiful gold, they got it from somewhere in South America, burn it down. So they show these melting pots, they take these necklaces they got from these areas, they throw it into this, this melting pot. As soon as they burn it they can see all the other compounds that this is not the pure gold, there's all sorts of mixtures in here. And then by, by burning it adding different elements and different uh, chemicals they can burn out the impurities and then reduce it to something pure. Then make that into a coin and now they have something pure, same thing. So the fire for humans is meditation. That's why not to meditate alone because you don't have any fire alone, you probably just have a devil and he's going to become stronger in your meditation. So western meditation is alone and then the standing by a tree and just talking to themselves, the devil in them is becoming stronger because it's like, great oh now I can just sit and talk to you all day whispering and giving you all my waswas -was and every kind of crazy thought and people come out crazier than when they went. 
But the tariqa, tafakkur is nothing like that at all. You're supposed to sit to meditate, visualize the shaykh is in front of you. Make sure you make the connection with the shaykh, play your salawats, the shaykh is in front of you. Nothing else, no other sounds, your salawat on Prophet and visualize the shaykh. If you visualize the shaykh then you're cutting out shaitan coming and whispering to you because you see the shaykh is right there. And if he's… you asked in the madad for them to be present, you read the madad of the shaykhs, their arwa and their souls are all around you. As a result now the heat begins but then you become the gold in the burning cup. So when their heat begins all the bad character will begin to come out. And if you do this consistently then you will consistently see the bad character, what did I do wrong today in madad? And then you'll be saying, okay I said this wrong, I said this wrong and write it down, write it down so that you don't repeat it the next day. Taking a nap back there. Who's taking a nap next to you, Hajju Kareem? InshaAllah. You know I see everything from here. Yeah, write it down inshaAllah. Then you come after that characteristic so that not to do that again. And then every day become a little bit better, little bit better and that's when we describe when the meditation and so much energy is coming, some people can't take the heat inside the kitchen. So they say, what was the expression, if you can't take the heat in the kitchen get out. So that's what happens is they can't take the burning phase and things that are within them that may be hidden to themselves are going to come out or maybe they sort of suppress that at a young age. So those little creatures and characteristics will start to come out in the, in the tafakkur and contemplation. And that's what's necessary is to come out and address that, to come against that bad characteristic, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum shaykh Wa alaykum as salaam wa How much of addiction is qadr of Allah and how much is it free will? I have been trying to cure myself for many years but I still struggle. Am I broken or is this just all part of my spiritual path? Yeah, it's not, not so, so simple addiction and, and conditioning of oneself and difficulties. You know addictions are self-medicating, so based on what happens in our lives and experiences in our lives people then begin to medicate themselves instead of going through life. So that, that has its own issue, Some, most people will go through life, they go through good and bad and they either become harder, softer, broken and some people as soon as the difficulties came to their life they began to medicate with alcohol and drugs and, and smoking or whatever people's vices and addictions are. As a result of that now they have a dependence on that form of medication. Again the same is the tafakkur, the contemplation, all of the spiritual practices and trying to abstain from these and fighting these desires and supplementing the negative desire with the positive energies and making du'a. So most of those other than psychological can be cured because those are vices, right? Someone who's smoking, drinking, doing drugs, they can stop. They have to make a, a, an action in which to stop, keep the company of people who are not doing that and ask God on a daily basis for support, right? You follow and enroll in a 12-step program of daily support, well that's madad. Have a sponsor, well that's a shaykh. So it's all the same system is that I have to ask for support for people who are more pious than me and that ask that their support and nazar be upon me and then I'm going to take my life one day at a time. Don't think ten, 10 years out what am I going to do now for my future but every day I want it to be a good day. And then go back to all our teachings and you'll see it's all based on curing these types of problems, right? Because if you're suffering from an issue that you want to medicate yourself most likely it's the past or a fear in the future. Either you're scared you'll never amount to anything so the future has you chained up 
or that in the past you were abused and put difficulty upon and that's holding you ransom. So then again in the spiritual pra practices those have to be cut. Alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah that whatever experience I went, I went through and Allah has a hikmah and a wisdom in it. And then you have to cut the chain of the past that don't let it hold a rope around your neck and the future is in Allah's hands and that you know build the faith and build your practices. So again it comes back to the meditation and the fellowship of very powerful souls that can inspire the heart and then they begin to teach you with energies and the, the desire to smoke will draw up, the desire to drink to draw up, the di desire to sort of use drugs and, and harm oneself drops. But mental issues have to have medicine because that could be a chemical imbalance. You know just like somebody coming and saying, I have diabetes or I have heart problems. You can't say, I'm going to medicate my… I'm going to meditate to get rid of that. There may actually be a, a physical ailment that you need medication for. So with the medication it brings you to an even state. Then in your meditations and spiritual practices it has a possibility to be cured and that you don't need that. You, you can recognize, oh I should be dieting, I should be having cinnamon, I should be doing all these things and maybe then I don't need all of this medication and then that can be reduced and if Allah wants it to be reduced. So this is a whole spiritual path. You'll see that everything that was taught was for all of this, all of these ailments. Because we're teaching Western audiences and, and uh, Western audiences these are the diseases. So for every disease Allah has a cure. So they sent a shaykh that understands all these things and that's why they're teaching. This is the medicine. Without the meditation how would you get somebody out of addiction? Just tell them, stop. No, because that's you know that's like a pit of quicksand. Stopping just by the virtue of saying stop doesn't do anything. But when you meditate and contemplate and ask for, for guidance and light, that's a 12-step program in which to, to ask for God's support and God's help and to ask for help to conquer things that I cannot sort of address and that the things I can I will work on and the things I can't that Allah support me in. And the greatest support is the madad and asking for help. So that that's why these programs are sent into these regions and to be taught. So it's under all of these ailments. When we talk we're, we're considering all of these different sicknesses and character defects. So it's not somebody with unique desires or addicted to what's being on the internet and visuals and it's all the same for them. That to counter the negative energy you have to have positive energy. The fastest way to get positive energy is now through tafakkur. And we described and, and, and warned people a year back or two years back that it's coming a, a time like bird box. You know if anyone's seen the movie they go out one day they flip a switch and you know the party's on inside their head, they're all over the place. And because of the immense amount of negativity in the air and all, all these things they were giving people and all the panic they put into people and the energies that they're releasing makes for a very unstable environment. And if you add on top of that you know taking away their money from the bank and closing grocery stores and ooh it's, it's going to be you know something unbelievable. So anyone whose keel is off is really going to go off and that's the danger. So the ones whom they're trying to reach and say that meditate, contemplate. So that you have a madad, you have a connection, so when the power goes out you have at least you made your connection because at that time is going to be very difficult. Say, oh everything collapsed, this is closed, that's closed, now how do I meditate? You won't even be able to get onto the internet. InshaAllah Allah help us all inshaAllah. <clears throat> uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa uh, How can we do meditation while traveling by train for long distance with people and how can we do meditation when electricity is cut off, especially in the mountain? In the mountain? Better. <laughs> yeah, you don't want electricity when you're meditating but I wouldn't meditate on a train again. You have to get the meditation book, two, three copies because you're in the mountain, give it to your friends. 
because that's all in the meditation book. So you don't go to a busy mall and say, I'm going to now open my energy and let everything in this mall attack me, nor on a busy train or you know if it's too busy and the environment is too crowded. So that would be maybe a lighter meditation or some wazifas and awrads and maybe not even that if the energy starts to come and overwhelm you. So that's not the environment to make your connection with Prophet So common sense would tell you make sure it's a clean and beautific environment. Now no electricity even better because then you, you have a candle, you meditate and you know that's the most powerful inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What should we do if we have been given a medicine from the hospital that is slowly poisoning us? How best to accept the symptoms and discomfort, inshaAllah? InshaAllah. Yeah, you have to talk to your physician on, on the medication and you know your, your course of treatment. If it's truly poisonous and this is related to cancers and all, you know alternative treatments you have to look and, and, and different realities. But if it's a psychological medicine and you feel that psychologically you're being poisoned then you know talk it over with the course of your treatment and the physicians and, and try to overcome some fears that uh, set into people thinking that this is poisoning them. But you have to try to take the medication and, and try to make yourself to be uh, in, in a good state. Allah gives everybody hardship. So that's, that's this game, this game is played with that everybody has hardships in their lives. Anyone without it that's not normal. So they're going to be tested in everything with their children, with their families, with their communities, with their life, with their rizq, with their sustenance, with their home, that's this life. Then Allah gave you the reward of this tariqah. That did you learn from it? Did you try this, this tafakkur and contemplation? Did you use these spiritual tools? If Allah enrolled you to get these spiritual tools, He knows what He was about to test you with. But if you didn't take it serious then you ended, ended in, entered into a test without any tools. So we said those gamers all know what we're talking about. If you played level one and you didn't go and get all the potions and all the, the, the surprises Level two has a surprise for you, right? And But you don't have any of the potions you needed, you don't have any of the, the hidden treasures you were supposed to get. Level three even far more difficult. So that's why the, the tariqah is based on, did you learn these things? Did you uh, acquire these knowledges? Did you do these practices? Because now these higher levels are going to get harder in life. And that's life in general for everyone. So you can't say, oh, I'm coming out of the tariqah just to avoid testing because Allah's going to be with you wherever you go. Outside of the tariqah that testing is 70,000 70, times more difficult. You know it's one thing to be tested by Allah in a merciful state versus uh, being outside and running away from Allah and Allah sends you know crazy people uh, to come and harm you because Allah describes in Qur'an that we test people and give them like warfare and put them in the hands of people whom have no mercy. So war is a punishment upon humanity and they'll be tested by the hands of people whom have no mercy. Why? Because they're coming now to clean. So better to be clean by Allah's rahmah than to think you running from Allah and then Allah sending, well then what waits for you are the people who have no mercy and they will get the same job done but far more difficult. So anyone with aqal and understanding says, oh no Ya Rabbi I, I'm, I'm good with the mercy part. I don't need anybody without mercy to, to put me into difficulty, I'm, I'm good right where I am, I'm going to clean myself and I'm going to take my… my my testing and my difficulties inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Illa shaykhi nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ali ashabi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyatun aliyya wa sayyidu wa sadatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha.